The Roman Empire and its iterations lasted for over 2,000 years and spanned from Britain to Turkey and across the coast of North Africa. With such a long and rich history, it is no wonder why so many misconceptions exist about it. From the clothes that the Romans wore, to the gladiators, and their famous white statues, here are some Roman Empire myths that you still believe. Gladiator battles were to the death. Surrounded by thousands of cheering people, two people fight viciously in the center of a stadium. After a while of dodging and deflecting, one man strikes the other, killing him. The man stands tall as the roar of the crowd surrounds him. This is the common perception of gladiators that people have, but the truth is much more interesting. Gladiators were fighters trained from birth. They were skilled and good at their jobs, amassing great crowds and support from people. Citizens often betted over who would win fights, and those that fed and housed gladiators were paid the winnings. However, the most common fighter were criminals and slaves, called Noxi. These unskilled and untrained fighters were often pitted up against other Noxi, wild animals, and gladiators. Noxi were not intended to survive, being used only to provide the crowd with entertainment. Occasionally, gladiators were pinned up against each other, but even these fights often ended in surrender, not death. Once the gladiators surrendered, they were usually forgiven by the crowd, getting to fight another day. Togas were extremely common. Dubbed Rome's national costume, togas are famous for their royal and civil appearance. These garments were seen in paintings and on statues from as early as 753 BCE. While these lavish pieces of cloth were quite fashionable, these were actually very clunky and restrictive. For this reason, the average Roman citizen preferred to wear simple tunic or undergarments. The actual use of togas was for ceremonial purposes, as many other clothing were much more comfortable, practical, and simpler to make. Eventually, the use of togas fell out of use by lower class citizens, then the middle class, before finally only being used as ceremonial dress for the wealthiest and most powerful people. We know what Julius Caesar's last words were. One of the most infamous assassinations of all time was the assassination of Julius Caesar. On the 15th of March, 44 BCE, more than 60 senators stabbed Julius Caesar to death. As the dictator lied down, breathing his last breaths, he said the phrase, a tu brut, Latin for, a new brutus. This version of events is the most commonly held recounting of the assassination. However, were those really his last words? Ancient accounts of the event recounted many different things as to what his final words were. But the most common and realistic theories were that Julius Caesar said nothing at all as he was attacked, or that he managed to get out the words Casey Technon, meaning you too child. The quote, a too brute, was not recounted or recorded in any documents at the time of Caesar's assassination. Where the quote originally came from was William Shakespeare's play, Julius Caesar. When the play was published, it became very popular cementing this dramatic, but false, quote into the public conscience. Roman elites vomited in the vomitorium. Lavish parties and luxurious occasions were cornerstones of the Roman Empire. Many wealthy officials gorged themselves with large amounts of food, so in order to fit in more food, vomitoriums were built so that they could vomit up the food to eat more. Or so, this is what pop culture would have you believe. In reality, whilst wealthy elites had huge parties and feasts, no rooms were constructed to spew up food. Vomitoriums were actually entrance slash exit passages located behind seats at Roman theatres and stadiums. The word comes from the Latin word vomo, meaning to spew forth. These places were often very crowded, so these passages were made to quickly allow movement to and from these events, almost vomiting them to the other side. Rome's statues were always white. When thinking of the Roman Empire, one can't help but think about the famous white statues and temples that adorned the towns and cities. However, these white statues and temples originally had colour. These marble and bronze statues were carefully painted with vivid colours and pigments, giving life to these still figures. In fact, paints and pigments can still be detected on these statues, allowing historians to restore them to their original colours. Temples were also painted in these pigments, depicting various myths and historical events important to the Romans. After thousands of years, these statues were buried, stored outdoors, tampered, and damaged, slowly removing the bright colours from them. 
What did you think of the video? Were there any myths that you think we missed? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe.